can we look back to the second team match last Saturday? Um, you stayed behind um, to look after that match. Can you tell us what unfolded on the day? What unfolded on the day? Uh, yes, a, ne a very near embarrassing uh, situation again in that um, obviously on Saturday morning I had a, a group of uh, by then 16 or 17 players who were going to be playing for the second team. Um, by the time they started arriving, um, we were very, very short in the front row, which had been the problem two weeks earlier when they'd played uh, or due to play against Richmond. And so we were faced with the same scenario as we had then where um, two teams had assembled to play, but one side wasn't able to provide a full front row. Now, I had got a contingency, and that was to borrow players from running engines, but that was far from ideal. Um, and so we were down at least one front row forward. And at that point, uh, John Mills, who is the chairman of the Stags team, um, offered his services at the tender age of 57. Um, I was a little bit unsure of that, not because I didn't think John was capable of it, but obviously it's a long time since he played, particularly at that level. But he was prepared to do it in the cause to, to get a game on. Uh, no sooner had John um, put his hand up than Ralph Grove at the tender age of 60-something, and he'll forgive me for... Um, not going to the full details, also said he would be prepared to do it. And in fact, it was Ralph that took the field uh, ahead of John, um, obviously using age as uh, the defining moment. And Ralph went in at hooker where he had played when he was a lot younger uh, and played a full game, 80 minutes. 40 minutes of that was with the scrums in contested. Uh, in the second half, they went uncontested because one of our props that had started couldn't to continue and although John came on he felt that perhaps he couldn't uh, go into a contested environment so we then had a game uh, of rugby uh, and obviously the second team uh, at the moment is quite often chucked together almost at last minute with people who haven't met each other uh, and to be fair although they lost 58-0 I just felt that part of the problem really was the fact that nobody knew each other they struggled to put any patterns of play together and uh, if we'd managed to, to have had a few games together, that would have been a lot closer result. Um, running engines weren't that bad. They certainly had a, one or two players who uh, were quite capable, uh, and they sort of saw our deficiencies. But obviously Ralph now has, has attained cult status uh, in the rest of the team, uh, right away up to the first team. As soon as they knew that Ralph had played a full 18 minutes, the, the score that they just conceded themselves seemed to, to pale into... Uh, a different sort of time zone because all they could uh, go on about was the fact that um, Ralph, who many of them have known for a few years now, had um, put his boots on and played. And of course, I then came in for ridicule because um, I didn't put in my boots and play. Uh, and there are lots of reasons why that didn't happen. Um, I woke up at early hours of Sunday morning um, wondering how the hell I'd managed to allow Ralph to persuade me that it would be a good idea. Uh, I rang him on Sunday to make sure he was in one piece. He finished the game with a black eye. Um, all he could do was giggle down the phone to me. Um, I'm not sure what his wife said to him when he got home. Um, but he was here on Tuesday. His black eye got a little bit less, but you could still see it was a black eye. And um, shook everybody's hand in the first team who just couldn't believe that he'd done it. So a real club effort from everybody, Ralph and, and John particularly. Okay, excellent. So what's been happening in training this week? Well, obviously, we're back to, to the same scenario we've had for the last couple of weeks of, of um, sort of recharging everybody's batteries, um, trying to emphasise the positives. Yes, you have to touch on the negatives, but try not to make too big an issue of those because they can become all-encompassing. Um, and so on Tuesday night, we worked on, um, yes, we worked on our defensive organisation and, and developed um, the, the exercise we were doing there to work, to, to work on offloads. Um, and then we worked on some counter-attacking um, options as well. and Because I think we've just got to get used to getting the ball and then using it wisely when we get hold of it. I think at the moment we're getting it, we've, we're, we're reacting as if it's the only time we're going to get it for the rest of the game. We panic, we try to force things, uh, and then we turn it over really quite quickly again and we're back into defensive mode. So we do need to work on defence, but we need to be more comfortable with the ball in our hand when we get it. So Taunton on Saturday, who's in the squad? Uh, the squad at the moment, we're still waiting obviously for um, having made the mistake for the last two weeks of announcing a team and then it changed completely overnight. Um, either because somebody picks up an injury at training or we think they're going to be fit and then they're not. 
um, will be selected from um, Nathan, Thomas, um, Alistair Widder, Tom Fiddler, Robbie Arthur, uh, Tom Sanders and, and Tom Bax. So obviously there's, there's more than we need there. And Jack Taggart, who by all accounts had a reasonable uh, debut against uh, Ealing. Uh, ben West, uh, Jack Sawbridge, uh, Andy Cannock, who's now back from uh, a weekend off. Um, Greg Price, Ollie Spanswick, who again is a very young lad. Um, obviously found out what it's like to play in the big time, but uh, that went really well. Um, Liam Perkins, Jack Avery, Will Clark, uh, Lloyd Cole, uh, Charlie Edwards, and then Jamie Monger, who's not been available for a couple of weeks, Ian Herriot, uh, Oscar Matthews, who played fly half in the second team game and looked very, very useful. Um, Steve Datcher has picked up a, a shoulder injury anyway, so it saves us any issues there because Oscar may well come straight in at 13. Um, Joe Gren and Martin Freeman. Um, so it's quite a biggish squad at the moment. OK, I'm talking to Ali Widdup, hooker from Hello. the first team. Hi. Hello, Ali. Um, can you talk us a bit through the players' perspective? So first of all, um, what's your training routine like? How do you prepare for a match, that kind of thing? Um, well, it varies quite a lot, really. Um, depends if, if we try and look at what we've, what's we've gone wrong in the, the week before. Um, if it's you know handling, we do a few, a few handling drills, a bit of touch games. If it's you know missed tackles and we'll do a lot of contact. So it really does vary on how how the coaches have perceived us to be going wrong in the last game. So on the day of a match, how do you sort of prepare for it? Um, it varies quite a lot between everyone, really. I mean, my, I myself try to get up quite early, um, do a few throws um, for the line-outs sort of purposes, um, and then I sort of keep myself to myself a little bit more before the games, but other people like to have a bit of, a bit of banter and things like that and sort of get pumped, whereas I, I try to be a little bit more relaxed and sort of thing. But it really varies between each player, really. Right. So the team obviously is not having a um, great season so far. Um, how's morale keeping up? It's actually it's actually been really good. Um, I think for the first two games, it was a bit of a shock to the system, obviously been losing quite heavily in the first two games. But um, we tried to take the attitude of, um, you know, we play rugby for fun. Obviously, we're competitive guys. We really want to win. Um, but we're all out there to have a laugh sort of thing. So training is actually, considering we haven't been, the results haven't been going our way, Training has actually been quite good fun, so everyone's sort of tried to relax and hopefully we'll, we will be getting better okay. because of that. And who's the practical joker in the team? Um, there's a few, really. Um, I think Martin Freeman likes to think of himself as a bit of a joker. Um, uh, Tom Fiddler, maybe, as well. Okay. But uh, I think, um, as in previous years when I've been one of the younger guys, and uh, there's obviously seems to be a lot of bands between the hierarchy of the team and you're sort of on the outside of it. I think this year it's been quite good that everyone's sort of uh, having fun together sort of thing so like you know all the younger guys and the older guys will be sitting together after training having food and on the bus you know there's no older guys at the back younger guys at the front I think everyone seems to gel together and has a good laugh so you know one of the younger guys wouldn't be afraid to come up to me and give me a bit of banter if I've missed a throw or whatever in training. Okay um, so I know you're one of a number of players that travel back from uni yeah. um, to play how does that all work out for you? Um well, yeah, I mean, I travel Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday um, from Bristol, which is about uh, an hour, an hour and a quarter in my very slow car. So um, it takes us, takes us time, but, uh, you know, just I try to get up a little bit early for training and do a bit of extra practice. Uh, and obviously the course is quite strenuous, but I, I tend to work it quite well. Okay. And who comes the furthest distance from all the players? Um, I think maybe uh, Tom Bax has come a few games back from Exeter. Uh, Ian Herriot comes from Cardiff, which is a little bit further away than myself. Um, but generally, people are at uni, but you know, there's a few at Reading and it's sort of half an hour away. There's only a sort of three or four that come from further afield, like myself and Tom Bax and things like that. How do you think the rest of the season's going to go? I, uh, I really hope that the results will start uh, going our way and we'll just start competing a bit more. Um, obviously, we're up against it with playing against teams who have got a lot. Uh, older, more experienced, you know, higher paid players than ourselves. But um, I think we're just going to keep plugging away, keep trying, um, and hopefully the results will start to go away. We definitely, definitely won't be giving up. So okay. we'll keep going and hopefully it will turn our way soon. 